times when people say, I don't understand that I can't meet the right one in my life. Are you going with somebody? Yeah, you're living with somebody? Yeah. What are you asking? You've already blocked the entrance. <laughs> okay? You, you know, make room for daddy, you know? <laughs> but they don't get it that way. And I don't want to be alone. So you settle. So what do you want from me? Right? That's what we do with our lives. And sometimes we find ourselves in a relationship that we know we don't want to be in, but it's comfortable. And that comfortability oftentimes is the test. What do I mean by that? When you look and you find something in your life that's really hard for you to do, take a good look at it, because that's probably the thing that you have to do. The most difficult thing for you to do is probably the thing that you need to do to bring you to the next level of your spirituality. Okay? Understood? So that means that, and I know people, I mean, we all know people like that. They're married to somebody for like 20 years, 30 years. They never had a decent day in their life, but what can you do? <laughs> right? What can you do? That's the truth. But that's oftentimes, can you imagine that you live 70 years like that? And then you say, I don't know. Finally, oh wow, one day they wake up and they say, wow, I can really have some happiness. So, but that's what people do, and people don't grow that way. You can't grow that way. Now, it doesn't mean that every day there has to be a, 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 a marker, that every day there has to be a challenge, that every day it has to be, you know, sweaty, no pain, no pain. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that when there is a challenge, when there is a situation, when you feel it stuck, whatever it is, take a good look at it and see what your pride is in that. See what you can do to change that. But oftentimes we don't go that far. So I just want to bring this up as a point. I'll probably going to be many questions about this. But the law speaks clearly about homosexuality. And it says, at times when there is a difficulty in the argument, and the woman is more dominant than the male, and they have relations, what happens is that a male soul, sorry, a female soul, enters into a male body, and a male soul enters into a female body. And that's why homosexuality exists. It's all it says, by the way. It doesn't say anything else. It's clear. The reason that I bring this point up is I have heard people say they're going to try to change, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. It was made that way to begin with. It isn't something that we can change. Today, thank God, the doors are open. People are open. Things are, are, are better for the world. We exist in the authenticity that we are. And we don't need to make a different framework for it. The Zoa says clearly what it is. Okay? And when, when, when he says something like that, when the Zoa speaks something like that, it simply means that I'm going to have blonde hair and blue eyes. If I marry a man with blonde hair and blue eyes, my kid's going to have blonde hair and blue eyes. I can't change that, nor should I want to. I need to be the authentic person that I am. And I think everybody. Second point, and here's an interesting thing. Okay. Oftentimes there's a question asked about children. Why, why are children born with disabilities? Why should a child suffer in this world? It's just being born and hasn't done anything. <coughs> and so it said that in a lifetime, and just, just listen, hear me out for a moment. In one lifetime, there is a man, and he gets himself stone drunk or high on whatever, and he decides to get behind the wheel of a car, and he's driving, and he hits somebody and it kills him. Now, I'm not talking about somebody that has an accident um, with responsibility. I'm not talking about things happen. Yes, things do happen. 
but this was somebody that was totally irresponsible, doing an irresponsible act and taking away somebody's life. That person could go to the family. He can offer the family money. He can take care of them. He can do a lot of things. But the one thing that he can't do is what? Bring the man back. Bring the person back. Now, this person leaves this room and goes upstairs. Upstairs, <coughs> once we're out of the body, we see everything that's around us. We see cause and effect. We see the things we did and we didn't do. We see the places that we can change and the places that we could have changed and the whole thing. It's all there. It's a ready for us. He's being told, he says, look, the only way that you can amend this soul that you took is by going down into the world in the form of a, of a disabled child. And if you live your life like that, when you come upstairs, you're clean. You can go directly and finish your job. Would not possibly a soul decide to do that? Possible, right? That's one of the explanations. But it's a very difficult thing. Okay. So now we come to an interesting point. When we incarnate, normally, we look like we look. Our facial expressions don't change a lot. Our body is different, but our the marks on our forehead, our hands, they remain the same. It says it's like the wind blows into the body as like a baby and it's formed. When it's formed, this, these, these uh, and molecules push out, 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 out to form a child. And then after we're born, it pushes more and more to create the human form as we have it. But the soul creates the imprint 